Welcome to UGC's e Shala lecture series on computer science. So, in today's module, we are going to look at various visualization toolkits. The subject is visualization techniques. The learning objectives of today's module, module are to introduce the necessity of the various visual toolkits, to learn about various visualization toolkits to learn about the different types of toolkits that are available and also to know the examples of data visualizations using the about toolkits. Introduction. Raw data can be hard for the average internet user to understand even for those with advanced technical skills as we know. In order to make this data easily understandable and user friendly, it must be processed and prepared. Data processing and visualization as we have seen till now are essential in facilitating the interpretation of data and the story behind the information. In recent years, there has been a huge proliferation of raw data that must be processed and prepared for the end user in a format that can be easily understood. This information is often difficult to understand. Therefore, various visualization tools have been developed in order to facilitate proper interpretation and understanding. However, these tools do not solve the problem generated by the low quality of the data source. Prior to the execution of any analysis, classic data processing states that we should pay attention to the data acquisition techniques and carry out a study of the data obtained to ensure a correct representation of the universe of information. After assuring the quality of information, we can proceed to assess the set of data that is exploratory, quantitative, etc., and get the results and visualization that best fits the results and information to be transmitted. So, one such visual toolkit is a VT key which is called as the visualization toolkit which is an open source freely available software system for generating 3D computer graphics, image processing and for visualization. VTK consists of C++ class libraries and several interpreted interface layers including TCLTK, Java and Python. The kitware whose team has created and continues to extend the toolkit offers professional support and consulting services for VTK. VTK supports a wide variety of visualization algorithms including scalar, vector, tensor, texture and volumetric methods. Advanced modeling techniques such as implicit modeling, polygon reduction, mesh smoothing, cutting, contouring and delanoid triangulation. VTK has an extensive information visualization framework and as a suite of 3D interactive widgets, it also supports parallel processing and integrates with various databases on GUI toolkits such as Qt and TK. VTK is cross-platform and runs on Linux, Windows, Mac or any kind of Unix platforms. VTK also includes the ancillary support for 3D interaction widgets, two and three dimensional annotation and parallel computing. At its core, VTK is implemented as a C++ toolkit requiring users to build applications by combining various objects into an application. The system also supports automated wrapping of C++ core into the Python, Java and TCL so that VTK applications may also be written using these interpreted programming languages. These are certain innovative technologies that are available as an interface to VTK. The kitware has developed the Activis which provides developers with an easy way to harness the power of VTK in a .NET environment. Activis generates C sharp wrappers around VTK providing a powerful and developer friendly interface to VTK. Batchmate is a cross platform open source tool for batch processing large quantities of data either locally or on distributed system. Batchmate uses a CMake like scripting language and provides users with a central remote website for easy online statistical analysis. 
Catalyst is an open source data analysis and visualization library designed to be tightly coupled with simulation codes. It can be directly embedded into parallel simulation codes to perform in situ analysis at runtime. The computational model builder, the CMD, is an end to end solution for supporting simulation life cycles. CMB breaks down the barriers for adopting high performance computing for use in full simulation process while increasing the efficiency and effectiveness of simulation in solving real world problems. There are other innovative technologies as well where Kitware collaborates with other team members on common toolkits project. CTK is designed to support biomedical imaging efforts not addressed through other software options. Current initiatives focus on DICOM image support, DICOM application hosting, widgets and a plugin framework. Kiwi Viewer is an open source application for exploring geometric, scientific and medical data set on Android and iOS mobile phone with multi-touch interaction. Kiwi Viewer is a part of Kitware's VES toolkit, an open source foundation for creating visualization apps for OpenGL ES environments. The Kitware Image and Video Exploitation and Retrieval Toolkit is a collection of software tools designed to tackle challenging image and video analysis problems and other related challenges. Recently started by Kitware's Computer Vision and Scientific Visualization team, KYWA is an ongoing effort to transition technology developed over multiple years to the open source domain to further research, collaborate and product development. Kitware is a primary developer of Leeson Sizing Toolkit, which provides an open source modular framework for Leeson Sizing. Midask platform is Kitware's versatile open source web-enabled data management solution. It provides a cohesive system for data management, visualization and processing. At its core, MIDAS is implemented as a PHP modular framework with a backend database like MySQL or PostgreSQL. Kitware is a leading open chemistry project which brings together the leading collection of open source cross platform libraries and applications for exploration, analysis, and generation of chemical data. The reconstruction toolkit and is an open source and cross platform software for fast circular cone beam CT construction based on Insight Toolkit. The Tangelo Hub is an end-to-end -end science workflow for R and Python in a neat little package. VES is a VTK OpenGL ES rendering toolkit, a C++ rendering library that uses OpenGL ES2 version. VES is developed by Kitware and enables mobile developers to harness the full functionality of VTK for the scientific and medical visualization mobile application. VolumeView is an open source cross-platform interactive system for volume visualization that enables researchers to quickly explore and analyze complex 3D medical or scientific data. So these are certain innovative technologies associated with Kitware and VTK. The graphics model of VTK has two major subsystems. The model of the uh, VTK has two major subsystems that is a graphics model and the visualization pipeline. The graphics model forms a, form an abstract layer above the graphics language, namely the OpenGL to ensure cross-platform portability. When the development of VTK began in 93, each computer platform had its own graphics language, for example, XGL for Sun and Starbase for HP and GL for Silicon Graphics. Abstracting the graphics concept into a platform and device independent layer created this graphics model. So this is a kind of visual or a figure which shows a resulting image using the graphics model. Processing tools. The, there are three processing tools that has been designed to assist in the debugging and transformation of data. They are useful to clean and refine messy data and convert it into appropriate formats. Often, large data sets represented in tabular formats contain typos and inaccuracies. Example, the dates are expressed in different formats, cells with abbreviated or expanded names and encoding errors, blank cells, etc. 
whose manual correction is quite infeasible. These tools accelerate the processing that enhances the quality of information and makes the data complete and easy to reuse. These processing tools are classified into two such as refinement tools and conversion tools. Refinement tools, Data Wrangler, an interactive web application for data cleaning and transformation. A Wrangler combines the direct manipulation of visualized data with the automatic inference of relevant data transformation. It enables analysts to repeatedly scan the space of applicable operations and anticipate its effects. It leverages semantic data types, geographical locations, dates, classification codes to aid validation and type conversion. So, there is uh, an example screen of the data wrangler which is used as a refinement tool. And then we have the Google Refine which is a free tool designed with the objective to assist in understanding the structure and quality of the data allowing the correction of certain common errors in data. It supports a wide range of formats namely TSP, CSP, SP, Excel, JSON, XML, RDF and Google data documents. The data source can be provided in four ways. In the case of Google Refine, that is we can upload a local file or it can be from a URL importing the data from the web pages, paste the data from the clipboard and link a Google Docs document. After treatment of information, the data can be exported in TSP that is tab separated values, CSP that is comma separated values and Excel formats and an HTML table. Google Refine has three key features. The data cleansing, it enables changing cell content and field unification. This action may be performed manually or assisted by the program. It offers predefined operations such as collapsing consecutive white spaces in text, scape, HTML entities, changing letter case, converting le text to dates, blanking out cells and among others. Data transformation transformations through GREL that is Google Refine Expression Language Instructions. It enables the splitting of columns, creating new columns based on values of other columns and combining cells to create new columns among other features. Creation of new data fields that is new data fields may also be created by external services to obtain new data from existing data or using the free base to complement the data. So, this is an example of the Google refinement tool. Next one types of tools are the conversion tools that is a data converter, a web application that can convert the Microsoft Excel data into various web, web friendly formats that includes the HTML, JSON and XML. So, this is one kind of uh, uh, data conversion uh, screen wherein the data has been converted into different format using Mr. Data Converter. The next type of tools are the statistical analysis tools. These tools are used for combining the graphical representation of data along with a strong numerical analysis. The R project for statistical computing is one such statistical analysis tool. R is a free open source programming language and environment for statistical computing and graphics. This is a command based language which allows the creation of tailored graphics. It is not based just on standard chart types, but also includes new types of graphics for different problems that are being addressed. So, this is one screenshot which shows the output from using the R and R statistical analysis tool. There are various generic visualization applications that is there are a number of tools available that offer visualization options. Although some of them use conventional tables and charts, many others offer new options such as tree diagrams and bird clouds. Google fusion tables, a web application for organizing, managing, visualizing, curating and publishing data on the web in a simple way. It manages large collections of data to be standardized and are stored in Excel, .ods, .csw or .kml files. This application displays data using pie charts, bar charts, scatter plots and timelines as well as represented using Google Maps which are shown here below. 
So, this is a Google map view of the Google fusion table and this is a bar chart view using the Google fusion table visualization. The next toolkit is a Tableau public toolkit, which is a desktop type of application. The technologies used are Windows and JavaScript. It is free to use and the author is Tableau software. The links and the websites are given here. This is a free tool for data visualization through graphics that combines an appealing, fast and efficient graphical interface with traditional elements of business intelligence tools such as the organizational model of variables using dimensions and measures or connection with other information management system that is databases and spreadsheets. Some of the most relevant features of this tool are quick and easy data acquisition that is it allows working with databases and spreadsheets of any size. It accepts Microsoft Excel access and plain text formats. Works with a variety of graphics and that is bars, stacked bars, pie, maps, polygons, lines or points. Publication of interactive graphics. Combination of different data sources in a single view. Data here are public. Raw data can be downloaded from the visualization. So, the, this is a screenshot of the Tableau public toolkit using the Tableau public toolkit. So, we can see the uh, tail of 100 entrepreneur which is being shown as a graphical representation here. Then we have a ge geographical information system wherein the data is represented in the map. Then we have some kind of bar chart kind of view which is shown using the Tableau. The next kind of tool is a flare or the profuse. The Profuse Java library and its flash cousin Flare were the first visualization frameworks that were used extensively. These are very full featured libraries that can be adapted for a variety of projects. So, this is a kind of diagram that has been drawn using the Flash and Java, Flare and Profuse. Some of the advantages of this toolkit is that by using the object oriented languages of Java and ActionScript 3. It is quite easy to modify the components of the libraries, replacing how the lines are rendered or how groups are calculated in a visualization is as hard as dropping a single file in the right place. There are plenty of layouts and chart types that you can choose from. Animated transition between layouts are also possible with the transition class which interpolates the properties for you automatically. Many useful applications like dataset filters and property encoders allow us to easily manipulate the data set once it is being loaded. Some of the disadvantages of flash and java toolkits are documentation and examples are a bit lacking. The flap that is a flare assistance tool has a lot of sample code and explains many common pitfalls. The flare library has not been updated since Jan 2009. Not that there is major bugs or anything, but it has not hasn't seen the latest and greatest. Unfortunately, Flash and Java applets are rapidly becoming out of date and the visualization made with Flare or Profuse would easily work on mobile devices and are hard to integrate with other web components. It is possible to interact with JavaScript via external interfaces, but it is a hurdle. The next type of uh, toolkit is a Google chart tool that which is which are to, uh, supposed to be written using JavaScript. Google chart tool is a Google product that allows you to make simple visualization using an online tool democratizing the process of visualization design. It has very low barrier to entry and does not require much programming skill to create great looking static charts are also and also simple interactive visualization. Some of the advantages of Google chart tools are no coding of graphical element is required and Google will host your visualization for free allowing easy sharing across the web. Many formats like bubble charts, line plots, tree maps and even geographical maps are among the many choices available. If you all you want to do is to generate images of charts or plots, you can do it with image charts API which only requires you to construct a URL with your data and formatting no coding at all. Some of the disadvantages of Google chart tools are for better or worse the images and data are stored on Google server. So, if they are down for any reason your graphic will also be down. Importing data is a bit clunky. There is not a good way to just consume the JSON or XML data and transform it into a chart. 
you have to either manually add data or use a Google data source protocol supporting source. Not really extensible. If you want to add some code or some functionality, it is difficult to do because the drawing code is not being exposed. Another tool is a matplotlib written in Python. Matplotlib is a plotting and graphical tool very popular in the scientific community. The great many packages for statistics, clustering and plotting makes it easy to present the numerical data. Some of the advantages of matplotlib are, if you are using large data set, the ease of integration with mathematical frameworks to process your data makes Python a no brainer. Easy integration with web server, the frameworks like Django or even smaller frameworks like Flash can be used to generate visualizations for users. Tons of information online since this gets a lot of use from the scientific community. Some of the disadvantages of matplotlib are no interactive visualization since matplotlib only generates static graphics. Because of the many dependencies of this framework, it is often difficult to get the matplotlib running on our computer. For example, on a Mac, we have to install quite a bit of requirements before we get it working. It is difficult to create in a design sense with matplotlib. Processing, Java like. Processing is another toolkit which has quickly become a favorite among the artists, designers, and programmers, a lake for its ease of use and focus on creating graphics. It uses its own language that builds on the Java programming language simplifying the syntax and creating of visual objects. So, here is a screen which shows the creation of graphical objects using the processing Java like language. Some of the advantages of this tool is that it is easy to load in the data and there are lots of great manipulation tools like map, constraint, norm to alter the data points and a wide variety of transformations can be applied to the drawing primitives. Throwing paint at a canvas approach encourages us a lot of creativity. It is very portable, that is, can export a project as a Java applet or even a native application that can run from the desktop. The processing JS project allows running processing sketches in an HTML5 canvas element and there is Android processing support as well. Excellent documentation for beginners and an extraordinary reference with examples great forum for advanced questions. Some of the advantages of this processing Java like toolkit is that it does uh, do not just Google for processing, but instead format your searches as site processing.org. Unfortunately, processing means something different. There are good books for beginners which guides through few projects that is visualization data by author of processing as a good place to start. Some of the disadvantages associated with this processing Java like toolkit are there are not higher level data representation built in. So, you will have to roll your own classes to keep track of layers and individual objects. Processing just throws paint at the canvas, it is up to you to structure it. Because the objects does not exist on the canvas, most interactions are sometimes difficult to code. For example, registering a click on an object has to be done by calculating the distance between the mouse and the object and seeing if the click was inside. This can be a bit tedious. The next toolkit, very interesting toolkit is D3 which is supposed to be written in JavaScript. It is a relative newcomer D3 comes from the same author of the popular ProtoVis library. It is an interesting philosophy of separating data manipulation from the presentation layer. It allows for clean code that generates interactive visualizations that work on browsers and mobile devices alike. It is great integration with the HTML stack makes this my current favorite framework for general purpose visualization. So, this is a character map that has been built using D3 that is using the JavaScript framework. It is a very simple framework which is being used and currently this D3 is being used by many of the visualization uh, people who try to visualize the data. 
advantages associated with this D3R. There is an Yang framework, so there are not many tutorials, uh, but there is an active Google group for QA. The author that is Mike Bostock personally responds to a number of questions that are being asked. JavaScript and jQuery are very familiar to most web citizens and this library borrows heavily from the jQuery selector style of programming. D3 focuses on representing the data. You can use whatever you would like as a presentation layer such, a, such as SVG, simple DOM elements or a canvas. Data manipulation is very simple. Whenever the data set changes, you can see exactly what data points needs to be added or removed and react accordingly. Can create static as well as interactive graphics. Some of the disadvantages of D3 JavaScript toolkit is an SVG that is a presentation layer most commonly used in D3 is pretty unfamiliar to many, but it does not take that long to get used to this kind of presentation layer. So, in summary, till now, Whatever we have studied in the various visualization toolkits are, we have got introduced to various visualization toolkits right from starting with VTK till the D3 that is a JavaScript kind of framework which is helpful for creating various visualization. There is, uh, we have also looked at what is the necessity of these kind of visual toolkits. We have also done a comparative study of all these visual toolkits. And we have looked at what kind of toolkits are better for what kind of data type. We have also looked at various different types of visual toolkits that are available, which are either programmable or non programmable kind of toolkits. We also have some of the toolkits which are very simpler to use, there is no coding at all. We have also looked at various toolkits which help in creating interactive graphics or interactive visualizations. And we have also looked at certain example visualizations which are being created using these toolkits. So, some of the example visualizations are shown, uh, were shown along with the toolkits and we have also looked at various example visualization using the toolkits. So, finally, we can say that we have done a brief uh, a survey of various toolkits that are available for creating different types of visualizations. Thank you.